Namaskar, let us begin with this sutra. Tabukatham ritam tapta jeevanam kabhi viriritam kalma shapaham srabana mangalam sri madatatam bhubi grinanti e bhuri da janaha. We were reading the Gospel of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, uh, Panchama Veda. From English book, page 786 and Bengali, 844. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he was talking and when a different type of discussions were going on, in our last class we have discussed that uh, very beautiful, very interesting discussions and it was with the, about the captain and what he said and what he thought. And a wonderful question that was raised and Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna himself was asking, must one perform formal worship for Eva? So, uh, just before this class one uh, devotee, he was asking, Swamiji, we see that the very senior devotees, uh, for a long period of time, they are coming, they are attested with this, uh, different type of religious organizations, they read so many books and uh, they have also memorized the many slokas of the Bhagavad Gita and apparently all very spiritual. But uh, still we find that they are so egoistic, um, so different, uh, difficult uh, uh, to explain in that way. So why? why the, the development of spirituality is not coming. In reply, the, I had to tell the story that Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said that three people, they were rowing the boat, but without lifting the anchor. So that was the problem. The sometimes what we do, we try to lead a spiritual life, but without lifting the ego, as long as the ego, the anchor that is there, and naturally it don't allow us to move the boat. So whatever practices that we are doing, if our mind is there in the Kama Kanchana, if our mind is there attached with uh, the ego, attached with the worldly things, then obviously it is impossible to develop the spirituality. So that is why the question, then when Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna uh, the, the, is coming, the, uh, for must one perform formal worship for ever? Formal worship. The worship is necessary and externally that whatever we are doing, it is okay. But at the same time, that should. Why we are doing it? To develop love for God. And how the love will come? If we develop the faith. How the faith will come? But as Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, the moment the faith comes, everything is over. Everything is done. The faith, Vishwasa, the God is there. It is possible. Everything is possible for Him. Most of the time we have seen uh, majority of the people they try to explain everything through the perspective of the five sense organs. Whatever we see, whatever we smell, whatever we hear, whatever we touch, whatever we taste, these are the five sense organs that the prakriti, the nature has given to us and we think that these are the best judges. And if things are coming within this uh, parameter, then it is okay, we can believe it. But beyond that, that is also the realm is there. Why can't we believe it? The power of God, it can do anything and everything. No, we are not ready to accept it and understand it. Why? Because we cannot go beyond this five aspects. The moment we can go beyond this, and that is called sadhana, that is called spiritual practices. That is called purification of mind. That is called withdrawing or uplifting the anchor. 
and that anchor is the ego. The when the ego is completely gone, then what remains is that truth, and there will be no problem for us. So this point we should remember those who are sincerely studying the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. It is not just a book. It is the Veda. It is a very holy book for the spiritual aspirants. Those who truly like to develop. It doesn't matter whether he is following the faith of Islam or Christianity or Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, whatever. Because the spirituality is the same. And there we must try to develop this. So we, he is telling like this, everything is consciousness. Look at it. When the, they were discussing Sri Ramakrishna, suddenly he said that, do you think there are some inerts are also there? Now, most of the time we say, yes, yeah, this table is inert and I, the person, is conscious. And I am sitting on a chair made of iron. I am working on a table made of wood. These are all inert, are they? The Vedantin will say, no, everything is consciousness. Only <coughs> the expression is less. When there is no expression, so that is the problem. The expression is less, so we cannot think that there is any uh, re consciousness is there. So actually it is very conscious. Everything is consciousness. The Chaitanya, everything is Chaitanya, everything is consciousness. And he was talking about the Purna and all that. Then uh, we will come to this 786 page where it says, a Pandit was sitting with the devotees. He came from Upper India. We, the, up to this we read, this Pandit, the Sanskrit scholar, they mostly go on narrating the beautiful life story of Lord Krishna. And, and naturally, this is their the only source of income. They will be narrating and in exchange the people will be giving them some pranami, some donation and they earn that way. So this it goes like this. The, the Pandit was there. Sri Ramakrishna uh, with a, a smiling and he said, Pandit is a great student of the Bhagavata. The Bhagavata is the book. You know, in Vedanta, it is very difficult to get the attention of the people and those who have not already prepared themselves. And to some extent, they know many of the terminologies of the scripture. So it is very difficult to understand the Vedanta, that is Upanishad. The people, they understand, they try to read Upanishad, but it is very difficult to. But the Bhagavata, it also speaks about the same truth, but in a such a beautiful way. So to duality and through duality, it takes us to the non-duality. So that is the Bhagavata. The Krishna was born. This is the situation. This is happening. And Bhagavata is related to the Mahabharata also. Krishna, the major part in the Mahabharata, Krishna, how he is working. So about the Krishna, so it goes on the stories after stories, but here and there the nuggets of gold as they say, like that the truth is there. And it's very interesting, so that way they will explain then the stories of the, the great, the dialogue between the son and the mother. So that also come Kapila and his mother Devahuti, they are discussing about the devotion, but the devotion is all mixed with the knowledge. A beautiful way, the, those who can uh, explain, they, they expound in that way and the people will be listening to them and afterwards they will give some money. So that one person who uh, having that as his profession, he came. He was sitting with Sri Ramakrishna. Now we find different type of people are coming to Sri Ramakrishna. Though he has also visited some of the parts of India, the uh, the places, but in his room itself, 
the different type of people sometimes the christians are coming sometimes the buddhists are coming sometimes uh, the different the faiths hindus but some are tantrikas some are vedantin some are vaishnavas all they are coming he himself sitting in that small room in dakshinesha uh, is having the parliament of religions the all religions are coming all faiths are coming all discussions are going on over there and he is assimilating he is helping the the that particular person to understand others also that way now about this pandit the master he was introducing the aim the master mahasha uh, the sri ramakrishna is telling the pandit is a great student of the bhagavata aim and the devotees look at the pandit here the pandit means the scholar and he is a sanskrit scholar and he expound the bhagavata and that is his profession and that is called pandit now sri ramakrishna introducing the devotees though looking at particularly the aim the master mahasaya all devotees now the devotees they looked at that sri ramakrishna asking a question to the pandit well sir what is yoga maya now this is a wonderful question what is yoga maya he we have already discussed about the yoga maya those who are following the this our panchama veda class they know in one time i discussed about the yoga maya this yoga maya the power of god now the god he wanted to create why he wanted that is up to him he knew the why he wanted but the thought came he wanted to create and when he wanted to create how he will create so he created some power that is sattva raja and tama this three we call it gunas in sanskrit guna guna means quality the sattva all the good qualities raja and tama gradationy and in the tama is all bad qualities and raja is the mixture of this good and bad but full of ego now this mixture along with that two other power was added want to cover the actual original thing and on that covering to impose something imaginary so abarana abhikshepa and all this so this is the total tool for creation so that is called yoga maya yoga i mean it is united with god all these powers are from god it is united with god because god is creating he was having all these qualities but these qualities are not affecting the god this is the vital point though these qualities are there now the people will argue how come how it is possible that those qualities are there and it is not reacting on that god so then answer bhagwan sri ramakrishna gave wonderfully he said the venom the poison is there in snake but that poison is not acting in his body he throw it he gives it to others he bites but that particular poison which is there which is so dangerous it is already there in his body in the snake's body but it is not acting over there similarly to some extent we can say the god when creating this is called a yoga maya this yoga maya the he is asking sri ramakrishna asking the pandit uh, gave some sort of explanation the master mahasha uh, didn't uh, take the note why because he didn't like the explanation though the pandit but uh, he was not very clear about the subject maybe so he couldn't give the answer properly and obviously couldn't impress the devotees sitting over there and sri ramakrishna didn't say yes or no good or bad nothing he just listened he then asked another question he said why is it not radhika called yoga maya the radhika the famous character many of you know 
that uh, in the Krishna's life, that the Radhika, the Radhika is not Yoga Maya, he is asking. The Pandit also answered this question after a fashion. That means that was also not very satisfactory. He couldn't give the answer properly. So when we are going to give the classes on a particular subject, so we should be capable to understand that ourselves and then only we will go to the class and give that course. The majority of the people without understanding why there is no realization, there is no sadhana, there is no austerity, there is no spiritual practices, only the, the using the terminologies, memorizing the terminologies and trying to tell to the people won't help. Because this is the realization, the yoga maya, the power of God and everything that is happening all around us, the whole world, the whole universe. Yes, the people will never like to believe that this is nothing but imagination. And those who could go beyond this and they look at all this, it is nothing but like a movie. So they are not affected at all. In the movie we see so many things but we are not affected. We see the crime, we see the Polish people are acti acting on that. We see the good people are suffering. We all see that, and, oh, okay, nice, a very good story and very good way they depicted and then acted. That's good. That way they always say. But we have to understand this is not real. Then sometimes some people, nowadays the problem comes that in the movie they are hitting the, the people, they are fighting in such a, with brutality. But some young people, other people seeing that movie, they think they can also do that. They are giving hard kick to the, uh, in the belly and the head and the fatal reactions are coming. The people are dying. A little bit thing. But they are thinking though in this movie, because they, if they are going on seeing the movie, that is all, all the time there in their mind and not that very matured mind. So th when they act, they act in that fashion, but they do not know that it is all false. In the movie, whatever we see that is all false, the hero is beating the, the uh, other people, five, uh, five, six people all alone. Why five, six, so many other people are there? But all alone he is fighting with them. But all falls. In reality it is nothing like that. But they can't understand. So same way when we look at this world and we see the people are suffering, we see the people are enjoying, we see people are this, we are people that that. And we feel jealous, we feel anger, we feel love, we feel this. But all this is nothing but imagination. The moment we understand that, what happens? We see everything in this world, what is happening, as just we see in the movie. And we are not affected by that. Whatever is happening, so that only we are doing. That's all and nothing else. So this yoga maya, and when the moment the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, after the question of yoga maya, he is asking, why Radhika call is not called Yoga Maya? The Radhika, the power of God, is not called Yoga Maya. The Pandit also answered this question after a fashion, but that is not satisfied. Then Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he is giving the answer. Radhika is full of unmixed Sattva. Sattva, the best quality. That is love, that is sincerity, that is purity. So we completely free from ego. All these are swaptika. The three gunas to understand Hinduism, we must have to understand these three qualities, sattva, raja and tama. They are the qualities of God. I mean, God created those qualities and it has come from the God with those qualities, permutation, combination, all these. Some people are good, some people are bad, some people are a mixture of it. 
So, we always see even in our own character, even in our own behavior, we can find that. So, this sattva, but the Radhika is an unmixed sattva. Why unmixed? Raja and Tama completely, it is vanished from there in our character. It is not there. The embodiment of Prema, Yogamaya contains all the three gunas. Radhika is the embodiment of Prema. What is God? L-O-V-E. The most of the time, majority of the people, they, when they think about God, they think about some imaginary thing. The God is sitting in the, in the sky somewhere. He is powerful. He is this, he is that. And with that imagination, some people think they are four hands, the ten hands. The Hindus are a lot of imagination. And they will go on giving different type of descriptions. The God is this, God is that, God is having the, the color of the sky, color of the grass. And he is like this, she is like that. All those imagination to help people, ordinary people. Because they cannot without the form, without the name, they cannot concentrate their mind. For them it is good. But that is not the ultimate but if you look, majority of the people, they stuck over there. They cannot go beyond that. Now, Krishna and Radha is a very, very popular in India, among the Hindus, among other people also. The thousands of songs are there, dances are there, stories are there, dramas are there. Radha and Krishna, there is love. As if all conjugal love, it is nothing like that. Nothing at all. Radha is the embodiment of pure love, which is God. The, if we, someone asks, what is God? How we will answer? The God is nothing but love and unselfishness. Whether the God is white, whether the God is black, whether the God has this color or that color, this many hands or that many hands, whether he was here or there, all useless. God is having only this. To express God, we can say, is love. That's why this Radhika is nothing but pure sattva, unmixed sattva, and that is prema. When we are translating the prema as love, that that is also it is very difficult to express. The prema is completely different thing. We will come, we will try to quote from the scripture, what is this prema? But what is yoga maya? Yoga maya is a tool. The God has created out of himself or itself, we can say, which is having three qualities, all the three gunas, sattva, raja and tamas. But radhika has nothing but pure sattva. So here, let me quote from this. It says, "Na Satchidananda." There's what is that? God is Satchidananda. Sat Chit Ananda. According to the Hindus, this is Satchidananda, the ultimate Brahman that is consciousness. But how to understand that consciousness? After the realization of the consciousness, the great minds, the rishis, they gave these three different names, Sat, Chit, Ananda. Again to help us, the ordinary people, so that we can, understanding this, we can try to grasp. What is Sat? It's eternal. So when we get a name, and we get an idea, a quality, then we can imagine. Oh, this is eternal, it is not changing. Maybe it is like the sun, maybe it is like the Himalaya, maybe it is like this, maybe it is like, it is nothing like that. Sun is also one day, it will, the, maybe it will take millions of years, but one day there will be no sun. So obviously, what is Sat? It is eternal never ever changing. That's why, friends, 
it is so unthinkable for ordinary people like us never ever changing eternal that is sat and it is the knowledge always every time the knowledge is present as swami vivekananda he mentioned in one place if it was not discovered the law of gravity it was there if people forget the law of gravity it will be there so like that the truth it is always there knowledge it is always there so that is called chit and anand the bliss the joy and that is the ultimate goal sat chit anand so those who are vedantin those who are particularly following the path of knowledge constantly trying to understand through analysis what is the truth why this is happening they reach to this level and they realize satchit anand and then what is this satchit anand again if we ask the great uh, rishi yoga vashishta he is mentioning ritam it is eternal it never change the course atma the consciousness param brahma the supreme consciousness atma and param brahma and satyam the truth here the truth means again eternal this satyam again and again they try trying to say the absolute the truth means it is completely eternal and no one can give any definition about it more than this it is ritam then atma param brahma satyam ittadika budhaihi budhaihi means the people of knowledge buddh means knowledge from there the from the knowledge the buddha the lord buddha he was gautama his name was gautama then when he realized that knowledge he became buddha so this is the buddha that we are now using imaginary definitions why for our sake kalpita vyavaharartham tasya sanga mahatmanah this mahatmanah this great thing they are using some sanga sanga means definition why so that we can understand it if we don't give now we have seen in the and the children and the pre school days they'll be simply playing with some dolls and these and that and through that they will be learning oh this is a horse this is elephant all the dolls are there they are learning with that then they they will take them when a little the senior they are maybe 6 years the school authority takes them to the zoo and there they show them the real animals look at it this is called zebra this is called horse this is called the elephant now they can relate yes they have seen the dolls they have heard the name they have related the form and the name now when they see the real thing they can immediately understand in the the, the teaching outside the class in the zoo it is so effective but before that they have completed their course homework so they know what is this the similarly those who are trying to realize god they are going to the holy company listening about different scriptures reading scriptures pondering on that trying to realize that and then when they try to meditate and sometimes the in meditation those things will come they can relate oh it is this it is like this it is happening like this the bhagwan sri ramakrishna said after you are practicing the spirituality for a period of time sincerely diligently your mind will become your guru guru means the guide guide in spiritual life 
then the mind will say this is not right path this is the right direction this is not good this is right so this is the way the mind directs us so this is the sangha the people of knowledge indicate sachidananda as eternal atman supreme brahman or the truth these are the definitions in the bhagavata we find that it says this sachidananda which is all pervading consciousness is taking form how he is taking form in the bhagavata it says grihita mayoru gunaha the maya maya means that those qualities about which we had already discussing satya rajatama and covering and superimposing on that cover all this five this is called the qualities of the maya and the name has been given so we can understand oh it is like a machine it is creating in this way so all these qualities he is imposing he is accepting on him as if the lord supreme lord who has created these qualities then with the help of those qualities his own quality as if he is utilizing and sarva daba guna sataha grihita accepting what mayor guna ha all the qualities of the maya so he took those and then came into form the sachidananda that means all pervading consciousness always eternal full of knowledge now he is taking a human form many forms he can take any type of form he can take and he has taken hindus they believe beyond this five thing sometimes the scientists they cannot go beyond this five for them all is the laboratory but laboratory can only explain anything that is within the purview of the five beyond this five chakshu karna nashika jiva and tak there is also a spiritual world and it has been proved by the life of all the great souls so when that sachidananda taking this form now when he comes why, why i am telling this now the sachidananda all pervading consciousness taking the form but why to get the joy to get the bliss his own bliss his own bliss his own uh, the ananda the joy why he is doing that it is his will so now what he did he took the form he created this universe out of that power maya then he himself accepted those and came in a human form now he is going to enjoy his form how he is a pure sattva the so only that pure sattva can enjoy that ananna mamata vishnu mamata prema sangata through devotion only we can reach to him and he enjoys that devotion and what is that devotion ananna mamata vishnu extreme attachment with the vishnu extreme attachment mamata to what with whom vishnu and what is that vishnu vistare te vishnu so these we have to keep in mind otherwise we are always confused <clears throat> the hindus because of this subtlety the, they have realized this subtle thing and they have made the religion in a so nice nice way so so that the ordinary people can understand but we have to keep our mind concentrated on that one pointed and all these worldly attachments that we are having at least for time being we have to keep it at bay then only we can realize what this great bhagavata is saying ananya mamata vishnu mamata prema sangata the great love the 
tremendous attachment, extreme attachment. Except that God, I want nothing but God. I want nothing. Only that love. That is called love. That is called devotion. Sometimes we call ourselves devotee. Oh, he's a great devotee. And he is a the outstanding devotee. Oh, all this. But what is devotion? As because we don't know. So we can't develop that extreme attachment to God who is all pervading. Who is all pervading. Otherwise, if you are extremely attached to it, one thing, and then again we become narrow. I am terribly attached with Lord Krishna. Except Krishna, there is no other God. And if others are worshipping any other gods, I don't believe them, I don't like to talk to them. If necessary, I can fight with them. Again, another problem comes. So that we see in the world. So that is why we have to be very, very careful. The ditches are everywhere. There's chances of falling. So one must be very, very careful. And it says that the path that we are traveling, traveling to go back to our own source, our original thing, it says, it is like walking on the razor's edge. It's so difficult. Shurashadhara nishita duratvaya durgam patastat kabayo vadanti. This, this, the way that you are, we, we have taken, we have taken the vow to realize God. We, the devotees, sincerely trying to realize God. And that is why Every week we are studying this, the great book, the Panchama Veda, the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. And it is the path of religion. And here it is so difficult to understand. Attachment should be there, but not to these worldly things. Oh, my grandson, my granddaughter, my property, my name, my... No, no, no. So all this is okay. Now it is over. My attachment to the Supreme God. And what is that God? All-pervading consciousness. But I have chosen, for my own concentration, I have chosen Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. And I see the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna sitting over there. And I am walking towards him. This is not narrowness. This is sincerity. So this sincere. I am not hating others. I am not criticizing others. How the other people are trying to reach to the same goal, to the truth, to the source of joy, that is their choice. I have chosen Vishnu in the form of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. And my goal is to reach to that Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. And I am thoroughly, completely attached to Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna with keeping my mind open for respect and love for others also. This is the point. Again and again we have to the, the sampradaya and sampradaya varjitam. That one, in one the beautiful stotra it mentions that you must be completely attached to your own goal. A very sincere. But at the same time you should not think that that is the only goal and there is no other God. No. This is the only thing we are trying to teach. The Bhagavan Ramakrishna in his own life he showed it in the Bhagavad Gita also the Lord said all paths are leading to the same goal. Of course that time no other religions were there but only the different type of responsibilities. So he mentioned that all those paths that they are following coming to me only Philosophies were there, so he mentioned in that. But here Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, the modern age God, he practiced that and he said all paths are leading to the same goal. And that is why this is very important to understand. And now at this moment we are discussing the Krishna and Radha. And who is this Radhika? He is not Yoga Maya. Sometimes some people, I have heard, 
in some of the kirtana they are mentioning the yoga maya radhika no bhagavan sri ramakrishna is very clear about it yoga maya is the mixture of three gunas and radhika that we see is only sattva guna there is no other two and he was full of devotion and his love that her love that she was expressing for lord krishna or who is krishna again this that supreme one who has taken the human form as krishna that that supreme one has taken the male form and female form now both are coming to each other through that divine love the extreme attachment that shows ananya mamata vishnu mamata prem sangata bhakti iti uchyate that is called devotion and who are giving who are the people giving this definition bhishma prahlad uddhava naradaihi they are the great souls we have read about them the prat bhishma that is in the mahabharata the great character the bhishma prahlad we know about the prahlad he himself was a great devotee uddhava he was a friend and brother of lord krishna himself narada he was the son of the brahma and he was very pure soul all they are giving this idea that you have to have a great attachment for the lord who is all pervading so that is called the bhakti now bhagavan sri ramakrishna is mentioning sachidananda wanted to test divine please for itself see the sri ramakrishna is so clear about it apparently he has not studied any so called scripture but whole scripture was within him why he was god himself and what is the scripture the idea about god that the holy soul realized and when the god himself is expressing that is the most purest of the pure thing and so simple way he is mentioning that sachid ananda sarupa about whom we were discussing now it says that it wanted to test the divine bliss itself it is why it created radhika that is why it created radhika she was created from the person of sachidananda krishna a person sachidananda krishna the sachidananda that pure consciousness taking the power of maya with the help of maya as if transform himself as a krishna and that krishna again became the that radhika and bhagwan sri nama krishna is mentioning very nicely sachidananda krishna is the container it is holding and ha he himself in the form of radhika this is a very important line he himself sachidananda becoming krishna then the krishna himself in the form of radhika is the contained and what is that l o v e what is krishna l o v e and what is radhika l o v e the container and the contain it is nothing but love so what is god love it is only love and this love that is already within us and that is why swami vivekananda said each soul is potentially divine this love is there within us but we are expressing it in a very narrow way we are expressing this is my children i love my country i love my religious path i love my philosophy i love and all small small thing and that is why we are not getting satisfaction even after practicing such a long period of time the spirituality so called following the religion mugging up the whole holy book 
We are not getting satisfaction. We are not getting joy. We can't live in the company of others. Constantly confrontation is there. Then what for we are practicing religion? So this question we should ask ourselves because we are not understanding that the God to whom we like to realize, to whom we are praying, for whom we are chanting, singing, dancing, offering puja is nothing but love and that love embraces each and every one. So a true religious person can never be selfish. So Swami Vivekananda gave the definition of religion. What is religion? Unselfishness is religion. So that is the reason any spiritual person who was really genuine religious person can never be a narrow-minded person, can never be. And he is mentioning, Narendra now respect Radhika very much. He says that if anyone wants to know how to love Satchidananda, he can learn it from her, Narendra. Narendra never liked it. As because he was growing up in that atmosphere, the people used to criticize. And in, you know that a time came, almost 500 years before Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, when the, the Sultaniyat that was ruling the India, the effect was also in that all over. To protect that and to protect the Hinduism, the Sanatana Dharma, the God manifested in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the eastern part of India particularly. And he introduced the Kirtana. Kirtana, the expressing the joy for love through some songs and dances. That is called Kirtana. And very simple way he gave. Otherwise, there is no time or the opportunity to practice religion study the scripture and all that, it was banned in, uh, almost. So it was so dangerous to practice the religion. But because the oppressors were there, that they were ruling. So it was a very simple way he introduced. And there he introduced the pure love as Radhika and love for Krishna. And they developed the different type of dramas. And that was enacted in the villages in the hamlets, in the remote parts. So the people everywhere, they will understand how a lady is going towards her beloved, that is Krishna. Then when they, they can un really understand that, very easily can understand that, because it is happening in the human life all the time. Now they are telling, see this Radhika is not an ordinary lady. She is the part and personal of the Krishna himself. It is the Krishna himself has become this. Here Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he is now teaching this. Do you think the Radhika is a separate entity? No, it is a Krishna. As because previously the Narendra has a monastic bent of mind, Narendra never liked this type of conjugal loves this type of worldly love. So he was not accepting Radhika. Not only that, he was thinking only about the Shiva. And slowly, slowly, when he understood, because Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna taught him, and he was a very clear mind, he realized, he understood, and he accepted Kali also, another aspect that uh, our Kali Puja in the Monday, we did the Kali Puja. We discussed on that. And before that, the Sunday, I gave a talk on this. The Narain accepted Kali, and that was the great news for Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. Great event for Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. And he was celebrating that. Why? Because the power of God, which is activate everything, if you are not understanding that, your knowledge about God will be 50 percent. You know God is this, but you do not know how, how God 
is creating this world and maintaining this world and again taking it back in itself. All this creation, sustenance and dissolution, everything depends on the God's power. That is called Kali. Here, the love aspect of God, pure love aspect of God, expressed through Radhika. Again, the Shakti, the power of God. These are the things, if we know, then we know the totality. Of course, it is impossible to understand God in complete. That's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna again mentioned, don't try that. It is impossible. Only God himself knows about that. But the great, the person, uh, spiritual personalities like the Shukadeva, and giving an example, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling, Shukadeva could took some water from the ocean of Shachidananda, a little water. In his palm, he could hold that much water, that much knowledge. And by that, it was sufficient for him. And you try to know the whole Satchidananda? Impossible. So he gave that wonderful example. You have come here to enjoy eating mango. Do that. Why unnecessarily you were going to inquire who is the owner of the mango grove? How many trees are there? How many branches? How much of production? What is the necessary? So we are going on inquiring about all this, the what this contemporary, the, the philosophy is saying, wh what that gentleman said, and what uh, this said, and the quoting, quoting, quoting from here and there. What they know? They may be reading some books, and then from there, they are finding some of the, the and they, because they are having the command over the language, they are publishing a book. That is okay, their expression. But Shastras are completely different. And that Shastra, those who have realized that truth, went beyond the, the, the border of the five, this Maya we can say, the beyond the Maya, power of Maya, they are the real people and to talk about the religion. And the greatest one, the best one, is Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. In the modern age, we find that. And he is telling, you know, Noren now respects Radhika. He says that anyone wants to know how to love Shachidananda, he can learn it from her. That is, the, and then just for our reminder, what is Krishna? Who is Krishna? Satchidananda. How he took the form? With the help of a Maya. What is this Maya? The power of God. The Satchidananda, these three words, just to give an idea about the impossible concept of Brahman. The Brahman, that the huge, huge concept, all pervading, the consciousness, just because our mind cannot take that much, so the rishis have given us a key that is Satchidananda. And from there we can understand this is the existence, knowledge and bliss. These three we can understand. And this from there it comes again very close to us in the human form that is Krishna. Now, up to this. Now, you have to go back to the original source. How? Through pure love. Pure attachment to that Satchidananda. So, again to teach us how to go back to the source. And that is the Ivalila. And that is the divine play. Why he is creating this? We should not waste time discussing on that. Asking that question and answering. Rather, that has come, that Satchidananda has come in the form of Krishna, in the form of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. Now we have to go back through them, holding them. But how will you reach back? Tremendous attachment to that pure sattva. 
which is in the form of Krishna. And how it is possible? And Krishna himself is making another character that is Radhika. So these, if we study, we can very easily go back. Thank you, friends. I think we should stop over here and we'll continue afterwards. There is one question. Shubrata Das is asking, how can we love God from heart? <laughs> the, how can we love God from our heart? It is a practice, you know, the when, a uh, first step, you have to read or you have to listen and then you have to imagine within your mind that this is God. That is better, as we always say, if you are imagining a divine form, maybe Krishna, maybe Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, maybe Ma Sarada Mani Devi, and this divine form, they are not having any selfish motive. They are, have come in that form with the help of their own Maya Shakti only to guide us. This is first. Second, you start developing a relation with, say, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. So you read the biography of Sri Ramakrishna. Why Sri Ramakrishna? Because he is very recent. There is no mythology about him, very uh, recent historical figure. So, Sri Ramakrishna, the, how he grew up and slowly how the, the, all those scholars used to come before him and to sit at his feet. So, that power was there in Sri Ramakrishna. So, this is the way, if you can try to understand, you will develop love. And love means what? Whatever you love to eat, you like to feed the God also. You like to share it with God also. So, 24 hours you are imagining the God is with you. He is your father, mother or your friend and you are talking with him and you are sharing everything with him. And when you are in depression, you are praying to him, crying before him. By that way, the genuine love that develops. Very good question. And once that faith comes, everything is over. And ultimately what? The great joy, the great happiness come, if we can develop that. So, one, one more question. <clears throat> when we are doing our practice, the mind goes and brings back to continue our sadhana. Is it okay? When... Mm -hmm. When you were practicing, uh, so far I could understand your question. So, 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 I'll just repeat. When we are doing our practice, mm. the mind goes and and bringing back to continue our sadhana. Is it okay? Mind goes means goes out. Yeah. Now suppose, and of course that is the sadhana. That you have to, the mind has been created <coughs> with sattva rajatama. And mind has been given that power also with the five organs, the, our sense organs, with the eye, with the ear, with the nose, with the tongue and the skin, the touch, all the time the five objects we are going to enjoy. So that is the mind. The, what is ahara? You know that ahara, we have some people are very pure about ahara, we should do eat not this. We should not drink this. We should not do this. Ahara means collection. Now, if we are constantly collecting bad things, through eyes we see the bad movies, uh, through ear we hear the bad sounds, with, and that way all the five organs bringing the bad things, so obviously mind will be contaminated. So we have to stop that slowly, slowly. And that is called sadhana. Then you are trying to meditate. Meditate means concentrating on a particular god or goddess or an idea. So obviously the mind is not ready to do that. It will go here, there, everywhere. You have to very patiently collect the mind back and try to put over there. Yes, you are correct. That is called sadhana. And we have to, without 
giving it up with great patience, you have to go on doing it. And in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, Shanai Shanai Uparamet, Buddha Dreti Grihi Taya. Slowly, slowly you have to do. Don't try to do it in one time. Oh, today I should do it and then. No, don't try to do that because it is the mind. Very sensitive. So you have to play with the mind slowly, slowly. If you read the holy books, slowly, slowly mind will become calm. If you are listening to the holy talks and if you are going to the company of the holy people, then you will see everything will be all right. Thank you very much, friends. Let us chant this mantra and we conclude. Niranjanam nityam anantarupam Bhaktanukampa dhritabhikraham vai Ishavataram parameshamidyam Tam Rama Krishnam Shirasa Namama Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Sri Rama Krishna Arpanamastu